today my topic is uh, simpli simplifying cloud native chaos engineering. I think, so I would like to know that how many of you have heard this term before chaos engineering? So I think you have, guys have heard this term. This is what is chaos engineering. So this track is mostly for beginner and intermediate. So yeah, I'll start with this. Uh, before starting my session, uh, I'll give you a very basic introduction. So I'm currently working as a senior software engineer at Red Hat, and I mostly work on uh, cloud web, all these technologies, all the cloud web technologies. And other than that, I have written a few of the book chapters and journals on the blockchain. So yeah, that's all about me. So yeah, these are today's agenda. Uh, we will discuss about chaos engineering. And if you have no idea on chaos engineering, that is absolutely okay. So I'll discuss about like what is the, you know, from the very key points, how we can do this in a real life production environment. So I'll discuss about that. So then I'll discuss about chaos engineering background, history of chaos engineering, how the chaos evolved. Okay. Then principles of CNC, how cloud native is directly, you know, linked with uh, chaos engineering and, and in the in a cloud native architecture or let's say you are using cloud native components like let's say microservice and any containerization uh, containerization and anything, how you can implement chaos mesh over there. And then we'll uh, take a few tools. Let's say in this, for this thing, I, I have selected chaos mesh. There are a few tools that you can also try. And because it's the open source one, I'll go for the chaos mesh. I'll also show a few of the demos that how you can implement chaos, chaos mesh using dashboard and CLI. So basically, I'll start with the background. I'll give you a, just a little bit of background about chaos engineering. And the first thing, as you can see, that is uh, cloud, it's for cloud native application. I'm not saying it's totally for cloud native application, but you have any, if you have any cloud native application, then it will be better. Then uh, we can implement the chaos engineering for microservices scenarios for resiliency. And now if we see, if we, when we work on, if we, let's say we have few of few environments, like a dev, QA, stage, prod. And before going to prod everyone, like we do the testing, right? But that's, you know, that's the deterministic testing. In that case, we miss few of the scenarios. So whatever test, I'm not saying every time we do, like we cannot identify all the scenarios, but yeah, mostly this is the case, right? So when we also write the test case, we may or may, like we may miss few of the issues. So yeah, uh, in the deterministic test case, we have few drawback. So what are the drawbacks? I'll take a few examples. Then how resiliency works. And now most of us, like uh, till now, we do the conventional testing in QA, UAT, uh, staging. And as I just said, it doesn't cover all the scenarios. Okay, let me give you one example that, okay, let me give you one example of deterministic test. Or uh, let's say how it, it doesn't cover all the scenarios. Uh, let's say you have a microservice and it has, let's say, five services and they are communicating uh, in themselves via SSE or WebSocket. And let's say your pod gets crashed. If you are connected with the SSE, whatever data you are consuming, it might, might get lost, right? So there are a few scenarios we'll cover. Uh, let's start with the, what is chaos engineering basically? It's basically a discipline in software engineering. The primary goal of chaos engineering to identify the weakness of your system, right? If you are building a system, you build a system, you deploy it. But what, what may happen after the deployment? You may face many issues. Like if you see now Meta, Google, all they had the outages. If you, say, if you actively use GitHub, you can see that page 404 not found. Sometime you have seen that, right? So these are like in the big scale system also, we face this problem. Uh, face this problem of the outage. Now, how we can identify all these outages? We, here we take few of the hypotheses. Then, based on those hypotheses, we can say that yes, we have to take these measures to prevent all these things. And when I'm saying that you just go to production and randomly kill, kill some pod or rather inject some network yours, it's not like that. It's not about that. You will go to production environment and you just be, you just uh, uh, you know, you just break few of the pods, right? It's not like that. So whatever chaos we are injecting, now what is chaos? I'll come, there are many types of chaos, network chaos, spot chaos, so we, I'll come to that. So it's not about that you will go to any environment and just randomly kill some pods. So we have to do all these things in a controlled environment. So here we will have the isolation, Linux isolation, controlization for that, I'll come to that point. And so as I ju just said, it's not only about randomly breaking the pods, okay. So I have a meme over here. So it's not like that. You will just go and 
break something. So yeah. Now I'll start with the history of chaos engineering. Uh, what happened? I am let's let's get back to the pre-cloud era when AWS, uh, Azure, GCP was not actively there. So we had we had all those systems or the virtual machines, right? So back then, this Netflix has started this practice in 2008. So what happened? They were going to their production environment and they were like randomly kill few of the virtual VMs. And they have tested this thing for a few times. So, but later on when they, uh, when they practice all those things, they have got some success. So what they basically did, so if you see this, this slide, so in 2008, they have started this practice that they will go to their uh, environment, they will kill few of the virtual machines. And from there, they will test that how, what is the resi resilience of the system. So they have introduced the Chaos Monkey in 2010. Then Gremlin, this is, this is also a very popular tool. Gremlin, it came in the 2016. And there are a few other tools. Uh, in today's session, I'll mostly talk about Chaos Mesh. So this is a very uh, basic, you know, basic timeline, or you can say history of Chaos Engineering. So it's not a very new thing. But when we are going to the cloud native, like if you have all those cloud native setup, then for this thing, we are kind of uh, like introducing this chaos mesh and all these things. Now, key points of chaos engineering. And as you can see here in the uh, right hand side, or I think it's my left hand side, your right hand side. So here we have four steps of chaos engineering. The first thing is it's hypothesis driven. Now what happened in the deterministic test? If you have 10 test cases, you will like test based on that. But why I'm saying this uh, hypothesis, uh, like hypothesis driven? Because until and unless we are experimenting all these things in the production environment, we cannot literally say. Because in production environment, we have, let's say our CPU, uh, uh, let's say our CPU size or memory size is different. So it depends on environment to environment. So when I'm saying that we will take the hypothesis, we should take it based on the production environment. But if you don't want to like perform the chaos in the production environment, you can start with dev or QA. Later on, we can move to the uh, prod environment. Then control disruption to test the system resi resilience. We have to make sure that we are doing all these things in a controlled way. Real world application for testing. As I just said that, we have to make sure that we will doing performing all these things in the production environment. Because until and unless you are moving or injecting the chaos in the production environment, you will not literally know that what is the, what should be the hypothesis of the system. And based on that hypothesis, you will, like, uh, let's say you are uh, performing a hypothesis, then you will uh, perform the chaos testing. Let's say it can be a network chaos, it can be a pod chaos. Whatever uh, result you are getting, you will analyze the result. Based on that result, you can improve your resiliency. Like, let's say, uh, after, uh, uh, let's say our pod is down for two minutes, it's taking two minutes, uh, it's, it's taking two minutes time to get up. So what you will do, if you, if you have lost some data, then what you can do? Uh, then learn from failures to enhance the system reliability. This is one of the core component of uh, chaos engineering. Maximize blast radius. Or I have missed a point, that is minimize or maximize blast radius. So what I, uh, blast radius means, let's say I have, a, I have these things in the demo. Let's say you are killing some pod. Now you just, uh, you have a namespace list of production, you just cannot, like you cannot just go to the production namespace and kill all the pods, right? You should have some selectors for that. So I'll, in the show demo, I'll show you that what is selectors and based on how, like based on a selector, how we can do it, how we can maximize and minimize the blast radius. Now, advantage of uh, cloud native technologies. Now, let me give you one very basic example of cloud native technology. Now, I'm not saying that we have to perform the chaos engineering only in the cloud native technologies. It's not like that. But it, like if you have the microservices or containerization, you can perform the chaos testing over there. Now why I'm saying that, how we can take the uh, advantage of the cloud native technology, let me take you, let me get an example. Uh, let's say if, if I ask any aspiring developer or who is very new to the development, that what, what is, like if, if I ask you to build a system, which, is, which can be scalable, which, which has the resiliency, so what you will choose? You will choose between monolithic or microservice. So the first tendency would be in these days that I'll go for the microservice one, because it has a lot of benefits. So when the microservice is there, then we have to, think in that direction that when we are performing some chaos engineering, we have to take care of that. 
Now, yeah, take advantage of the cloud native technology. We, we can declare the API and we can control every, we have the CID for that in the chaos engineering. I'll just show you. And Linux container for the isolated environment to control the blast radius. So when you are, we have, you have the container, you can, you can like, you can iso perform this testing in the isolated environment and you can control the blast radius. Now, these are a few principles of CNC, that is cloud native chaos engineering. Open source, we have the chaos API, and how we can, like, uh, you, you, you don't need to every time write all those CRDs. If you are using chaos mesh, you can do it very easily. If you don't have any, let's say, we, let's say you are a QA and you don't have very much knowledge about, uh, you don't have very much knowledge about Kubernetes, or you don't know that what is namespace, what is service, what is ports. So how we can perform this? You don't, like, you have few times, and you don't need to learn all these things. You can use the uh, Kubernetes chaos mesh dashboard. Using the dashboard and you can you can do it. And if you have Kubernetes idea idea of KTS, that is very good. So yeah, chaos mesh. Now I'll start with the chaos mesh. Uh, it's a it's a uh, it's an open source chaos engineering platform for Kubernetes. It's designed to simulate and identify the potential weakness. So what I have just said, what is chaos mesh? Now I'll tell you that how we can implement this thing in the real life scenario. So this is the tool for that. If you want, you can use a few other tools, you can use Gremlin and Chaos Monkey also. The goal of uh, chaos engineering is, let's say, we need to identify the weakness of the system. For that, we need to inject the chaos, we need to make the pause down, we need to uh, test the stress, or we need to uh, tra trace the network. So for that, you can use this chaos mesh. And we, uh, one potential thing is, we have to identify the problem before it affects the user. Key points of the chaos mesh. Until now, if you have any question, you can ask me, then I can take forward, like I'm uh, talking for a long time. So if you have any question, you can ask me, or I can go forward. So yeah, key points of chaos mesh. Uh, the, uh, so you can see that diverse false injection, uh, Kubernetes native, easy of use, or, uh, observability, and extensibility. So I'll come to this point. And now when I'm talking about chaos, it's about injecting the chaos in your system. So there are a few chaos, network chaos, DNS failure, DC, IO, IO issue, CPU memory issue, uh, port fault, there are, there are many. Then uh, ease of use, uh, it, provides you, it provides you the dashboard and CLI to use it. We have three parts of chaos mesh. Now I am talking, not talking about uh, chaos engineering, I am talking about the chaos mesh, that tool. So this is the overall architecture of chaos, as you can see in the, uh, you know, what is this color? This is red, not red. So uh, these are few chaos that we have, and it has chaos mesh has three things. One is chaos dashboard, uh, then controller manager, and chaos daemon. Now, let's look at what is chaos dashboard. Chaos dashboard is something, it's, a, it's an UI. If you have few knowledge on Kubernetes, you can use this chaos dash dashboard. If you know that these are few ports, I need to kill them, or if this is the network, I have to inject the chaos over there, you can use chaos dashboard and you can set up the workflow also. It also help you to automate your system. So that is chaos dashboard. The second one is control manager. Whatever workflow you set, it basically control your experiment, it basically schedule your workflows and everything. And chaos demon is, is the brain, you can say, brain of the chaos mesh. So it basically inject the chaos in your system. So internal workflow, I, I probably just said you that uh, okay, in the chaos ma controller manager, it will creation, deletion, and set up all those workflow, and chaos demon is for injecting the chaos. Now, yeah. And in the chaos mesh, you will get the dedicated chaos executors. We have the Kubernetes API for the port kill, and whatever, like there are many types of chaos. When I start with the demo, you can see, you can see all those things, and that is very easy. Like you can easily implement all those things. Then pod experiment, I'll take the demo for, I'll show you the demo for this pod experiment. Uh, we have, in the pod you can, you can uh, start with the pod kill, or pod failure, or container kill. As you can see in my screen, these, I'll also get this slide available, I'm just not reading all these things. Mm, then net, uh, network chaos experiments, if you want to block any communication between, if, let's say if you have microservices and you want to block the communication, for that you can use the network chaos. Stress scenario, as you can see in, the, in my uh, right hand side, uh, there, there is a dashboard for the experiment. You, if you want to stress the, if you want to test the memory stress or CPU stress, you can also do it using the chaos mesh. 
Now, how to set up the chaos mesh? Uh, I'll just show you the demo. The, the uh, to setting up the chaos mesh is very easy. At, you can uh, install it using Helm. So these are few commands that you have to do. I have all the, all I already have the chaos mesh in my system, so I'll not just install it. So yeah, this is the Helm chart. Then uh, we I'll just I'll just uh, show you the demo. Uh, just give me one minute. Uh, in between, if you have any question, you can just ask me. Okay, so at first we'll see, uh, you have to install the Chaos Mesh and let's see that how uh, Chaos, uh, the entire uh, details of like how many services or deployments we have. Let's check that. Uh, for that, we have this command that is uh, qctl get uh, svc ports and deployments. Uh, let me run this command. Yeah, so as you can see in the details, we have the chaos daemon, chaos dashboard, and chaos ma controller manager. So, uh, and one thing, don't kill the, uh, during the experiment, we have to make sure that we are not killing this chaos, chaos namespace. So in the namespace, we have these uh, services, ports, and deployments. Now, uh, we will start with the, we'll uh, to run this, chaos, as I am using Minikube, if you are not using Minikube, that is also okay. If you are using Minikube, you can do this port forward, and by default, it's running on, we'll run this on uh, 9094. So yeah, let me run this thing. Uh, yeah. Okay, oh, it's already running in the 9094. Yeah, so when, if you are setting the, uh, if you are setting up the uh, chaos mesh, you need to provide the token. So you can generate the token from here. I have this, uh, I have this rbag.yaml. So here you can uh, set up the to token. And if you, uh, like, if you need this YAML file, you can get it from here. I would say that uh, select the default and role every time that select the role of manager. So I have the things over here. So I'll just, uh, run this code. Then our back, you will get the uh, you will get the service account. So you just have to copy this service account, and we will run this command that is kubectl uh, create, create token. So yeah, that is fc fc. Here you will get the service uh, service account fc jds. Yeah, this is the token that you have to put over there in the chaos mesh dashboard. I probably uh, given something to create copy this thing. Control C, Control C, and test. So yeah, you can see this is the Chaos Mesh dashboard. I think uh, here now are uh, we have the we have all the setup for the Chaos Mesh. Now we'll start with the experiment. So today I'll show you the demo for the pot kill. So let's say we have few of the ports. I'll I'll show the demo based on the nginx. If you if you want, you can take any of the image and you can uh, set up the thing. So this is the nginx dot yaml. So this is a basic. Uh, this is a like basic deployment. So you can see we have two selectors. So these are selectors. One in metadata we have two selectors. One is blast at devcon, and it's not like really blast at devcon. And we have the sensitive environment. I just told you about that. How we can is it, is it clear properly or should I? Yes, yes, sure. Just tell me. Now is it better? 
okay sorry yes so is it better now yeah so as you can see we have a uh, we have two uh, basic deployment uh, the, like these are two deployment of nginx uh, nginx deployment and we have in the metadata we have two selectors so the selectors are blasted defcons and the sensitive environment as you as as i just uh, told you that we have to control the blast radius so we can use this selector for that uh, what i'll do i'll just i'll just apply i'll just uh, run this deploy this deployment So these are already deployed. Then we have to inject this chaos. Now this is the chaos we have. Uh, as you can see, we have the chaos mesh. This V1, we are using this. And the kind is schedule. And the namespace is chaos mesh. As I just told you that this is the namespace that is chaos mesh. Then, yeah. So these are selectors. We are not uh, killing the pot, which is, which is a uh, uh, sensitive environment. We are just killing the pot which has this level that is blast at defcon. Now let me run this thing. I'll just run this pot kill demo. Yeah. So I'll just see that how. Uh, okay. Before that, let me show you the level. So you can see we have uh, we have few, this eight pot which has this blast at defcon and we have two sensitive environment. Now let me put it this thing in the watch mode. Then you can see that uh, how it's killing the pot. So yeah, it's running now. Uh, it will take some time. Yeah. So you can see it started its work. It's terminating the previous pod and as is just terminating the previous pod, he started creating the new pod. So yeah, this is how the kiosk is running. Now I'll show you that how you can do the, you can uh, perform the things on like, uh, if, you, if you want to do the network kiosk, the process system, you just have to go through the EML, you just need to change the EML, and you can just inject it. And you can tell me that how we can delete the, de so we have this command to delete the kiosk, as you can see, it's like uh, terminating and creating the container. So you can set a, you can set that thing after how many attempts it will uh, it will stop. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So I have given you the administration permission. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So you can you can also give it because we are performing this thing with a namespace. You can also give the permission for the namespace. Yeah. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yes. Yes. So as you can see that, uh, also if you go to this pot kill example, we are only performing the thing on the namespace. It's the namespace one. So okay, let me terminate this kiosk. Uh, it will be. Okay. Uh, I think. So we have deleted the kiosk. So this is how we are killing the pods. Now if you think this is too like if now let's uh, get back to the chaos mesh dashboard. So I think if now I'm talking about if you have no idea on the Kubernetes how we can do these things. So you don't know how to write the deployment. You don't know how to write the all these charts. So then what you can do, you can come to chaos mesh. You can go to experiment. If you want, you can also set up a workflow if you want to automate the stuff. Uh, you will come to this new experiment. Then you can select, let's say uh, I'll go for pot fault. You can select any of that based on your requirement. I'll select the pot kill. I'll just submit it. Now, then you can select the namespace. If I, if I do this, if I just select the chaos mesh, because this is the default uh, namespace for the chaos mesh, so it, it will just kill, a, a, like kill its own namespace. So we have to make sure that we are not deleting this chaos mesh. For the demo, we have this uh, chaos sandbox. So I, I am selecting this namespace for the demo and the selector that is blustered defconf and name. 
def con demo. So I think it don't work now. Uh, let me click on the submit. It don't work because this UI, I'm not sure that's a bug bug or not. You have to do that, write the things in small. And yeah, you have to make it hyphen separated. Demo at def con. So yeah, let me submit this thing. And you can also monitor uh, how it's injecting the chaos. So you just click on this. In the UI, you can also see that uh, how it's killing the pod. And if you go to Kubernetes dashboard, Minikube dashboard, uh, sorry, dash. Just a minute, let me check where I'm running the mute Minikube. Uh, you can also get the, see the report from there. Yeah, so this is the default one. Let me uh, go to the chaos sandbox. Uh, you can see it's killing the pod. It, it, it started 45 seconds ago. After a certain time, it's killing all this pod. pod. So you can see the our experiment is completed. And you can also schedule it for 15 seconds or 20 seconds. So yeah, this is how you can use this Chaos Mesh dashboard. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah, I think this I have done this portion. So how to stop the chaos? I have already shown you. Mm, yeah, this is the example for the dashboard. So if you have any questions, you can ask me. It was a like introductory session of you know very basic details of what is chaos engineering, how we can start with the chaos mesh. So if you have any question, you can ask me. Yeah, for that thing, you have to give the cluster access. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so I have to repeat the question. So that is like your question is that if you are uh, trying to perform the uh, uh, chaos of network or it's, uh, let's say CPU or memory, all these things, do you, do you can you start with the go for the only namespace or the cluster? Your question was that. Yeah, you have to make sure, you have to segregate the network. Yeah, so for that thing, let's say if you can uh, get the, use the selectors, selectors to like, let's say if you have this port, but when it's coming to the network layer or the, let, let's say cluster based thing, then you have to give the permission for the cluster only. So yes, any other question? But yeah, if you want to do this based on the ports, deployments or service, you can go for the selectors. But if you are like, uh, let's say if you have, uh, if you have a network, you, are, you want to inject some chaos in the network, for that is cluster space, so yeah. Any other questions? So yeah, that's all from my end. Thank you so much guys for your time. And if you, if you want to connect me, you can, uh, this is the project, this is a GitHub project. If you want this, you, if you can, just select the, you can go to my GitHub and just get it, just run it. This is not very much tough. And if you want this slide, it has all the steps. So you can just go to this DevCon chaos and you can like, just, just experiment it. It's not like you have to go to production and kill the pots. It's, it's very, like, it's very cool also, right? So, yeah. Oh, you can run, if you want, you can, yeah, definitely. So for that, you need the permission from your project manager, right? So, okay, so don't, my suggestion is don't do it, but yeah. Oh, it's recorded, yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's all. If you want to connect me, you can connect with, connect with me in the uh, GitHub or LinkedIn. So yeah, that's all. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.